All right, guys, good morning. Now the issue with my mouse being solved. Two mouses here and both seem to not uh, be keen to get connected with Bluetooth. Uh, anyways, the second mouse uh, is seemingly working. Usually I have only one mouse in my life, but uh, now there seems to be uh, some bit of a confusion here. In this case, so let's uh, start here. Sorry for the bit of a delay. Yesterday, we had uh, the European Central Bank, namely Christine Lagarde, not uh, pointing out uh, any potential deadline, any time frame when on what uh, basically would cause the central bank to reduce interest rates. Instead, she said uh, that the bank would remain data dependent and would actually check out what uh, potentially might go and how uh, the numbers would uh, come in. Those numbers mentioning, uh, as she mentioned, um, are the ones obviously kind of in regards to inflation. She said inflation would come down, labor markets somehow being a quite an issue still. There we go, interest rate decision somehow at uh, similar levels and uh, without any potential deadline or any date. And she said, uh, I know you guys are really keen on finding out uh, when we are going to adjust rates to the downside, but uh, she didn't reveal any deadline, any time frame. So that's why the market has not really done anything much. We had initial jobless claims, worse than expected somewhat, but we had uh, GDP growth figures we were kind of quite better, coming in better from the US. Uh, and that alongside the press conference was uh, potentially what uh, caused the market to weaken. We sold at higher levels initially, we had two positions. One we closed at basically entry, slight loss, and uh, the other position we closed half of it at least in uh, take profit. Let me check out here. So uh, half of it uh, we closed. Yeah, that was the slight loss. The other trade we closed half uh, with a bit of a profit here at the stop loss to break even, and the remaining half uh, of the position was exactly 108.37. So stopped out at the uh, psychological and weekly technical support area where we kind of uh, closed the position, the position was closed automatically. Quite uh, a good trade yesterday in this case, um, a bit of a textbook uh, approach here and uh, the market was seemingly on our side, side. So let's see on how the further momentum is going to behave because uh, what we can observe at the moment is simply that uh, the US dollar has been uh, kind of uh, gearing up momentum as we initially thought and now we are back uh, at uh, below important areas. We are below the 50 moving average and that's on the weekly chart, right? So this could cause the markets to uh, weaken somehow further uh, so far for the time being. Plus what we can see is uh, that also longer term trend lines uh, suggest that the market is finally giving way what acted as a support now turning resistance uh, and now might be uh, kind of uh, in for some sort of further weakness here. The euro dollar obviously kind of looks uh, kind of quite uh, weaker in this uh, market environment. Uh, the pound uh, itself uh, something similarly in this case uh, offering as well slight uh, triangle formation. Whether we draw trend lines this on a shorter time uh, uh, horizon or on a longer one remains the key takeaway. Uh, let's uh, start with the longer market environment here and see how the market's uh, uh, supportive range, the 50 moving average, which kicks in anytime soon, will potentially act as a little bit of a support mm. in this market leading to some upside um, motivation. Oh, nice cappuccino here uh, with a new milk foaming machine here at home. Um, pound US dollar, that it is uh, here. Interesting enough is the Australian dollar. It's not really keen on moving somehow lower. We have uh, our sell stop order. I still got to uh, put this into our VIP trading alert section as well as a, a little uh, podcast later I'm going to record as well for you guys uh, in case you're one of the VIP clients here talk to your account manager was needed to qualify for that where we have uh, background information analysis more market news as well and uh, obviously quite uh, in-depth trading alerts uh, when our signals uh, 
tell us that there is something potentially to be uh, of tradable opportunity. In any case, sideways price action here, the market retested this breakout zone so far, but has not really been keen to move lower, which is uh, quite contradictory. Let's uh, have this uh, alongside uh, each other. The Aussie stabilizing, right? Where else the euro has weakened and that's the interesting part so risk on risk off market momentum risk on of course the australian dollar would give us uh, quite some interesting feedback in regards to risk sentiment positive or negative and uh, obviously here this market environment is uh, kind of quite something interesting here in showing another opportunity whether the market is going up or down but stock markets are starting at least to potentially weaken somewhat the s p starting to roll over the nasdaq indeed started at least to correct a fair bit that looks like a bit of a correction in the making here at least we talked about it uh, recently we have this uh, uh, basic uh, uh, the basic deviation here where the Nasdaq price-wise moves to the upside uh, and uh, the indicator, the relative strength indicator is moving to lower levels or is not at least say is not growing as much as uh, the uh, stock market itself moving to higher levels. That said, the so-called divergence can be seen and uh, that divergence obviously is something where we say, hey, it might be a time that the market at least uh, celebrates a bit of a correctional pattern here. The Dow Jones uh, seems not to be uh, affected that much and uh, the German DAX uh, still somehow trading a bit steady as well. So Dow Jones, uh, DAX similarly slightly at higher levels, S&P having moved higher way before, NASDAQ having moved higher way before are now starting to weaken somehow. So there is further momentum potentially which is giving us some feedback here on the Aussie sell stop opportunity potentially. The gold market uh, is uh, and has been uh, kind of uh, in a sideways uh, pattern here for now, not too much is happening, but we are driving around the 50 moving average area here with gold potentially starting to increase in value a little bit. So that's uh, at least happening for now. Silver, on the other hand, has increased its price uh, range uh, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. So Monday down, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to the upside. Friday slightly lower textbook kind of uh, in terms of like, what goes down on early hours uh, and days of the week might start to strengthen during Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and might find some profit taking on Friday. That's exactly how the market's happening on uh, the silver chart here. Looking at it from the weekly perspective, uh, it's uh, still perfectly in line for potentially upside potential next week. We could see that the market is going to uh, strengthen again next week offering uh, a positive motivation here with upside momentum. So silver looking kind of quite positive as long as we also remain on top of this 50 moving average on the monthly chart, there could be upside potential. So uh, this uh, market environment here looking kind of quite positive here in uh, silver's terms uh, to move back to higher levels uh, and potentially here. Uh, the demand in silver and the economic data, we got something in regards to China, the People Bank, People's Bank of China, basically the central bank, the public central bank in the communist Chinese country, we might comment on this one, uh, unveiled some uh, extra plans. They're going to support the economy. Uh, a handful of trims of the amount of cash banks need to hold uh, as a reserve from some modest policy uh, rate cuts uh, as well as steering certain credit to uh, certain credit into certain selected areas uh, certain economies potentially so um, whether this is going to give uh, markets a boost is the interesting situation obviously the influence and the input from uh, the government in particular or in most areas obviously in the for the economy has uh, caused uh, trust distrust from the investors perspective so we can observe at the moment at least that uh, investors are not seemingly extremely 
keen on uh, supporting uh, the market momentum and uh, pushing markets, stock markets in particular, to the upside. The Chinese A50 index had found a bit of a bottom, but uh, in any case, uh, a bit of a tricky situation as it's kind of politically a lot of uh, involvement which can be seen in that uh, market. Back to what we observe right now. Silver and the demand cycle, as Elon Musk stated, he sees a growth wave uh, next year. Let's have a look, actually, because uh, I didn't focus on this yesterday, how the Tesla shares price has developed, likely not really good. And yeah, it's really, it's really extremely bad, bearish motivation here. Tesla kind of really stocks from the 200 down now below the 200 level. That looks really uh, really bearish and uh, it's uh, it's I know everyone not everyone many uh, investors say hey it's not only a car manufacturer it's a tech company Frank they are AI rich they have so much computing power they have so much brain power used to produce their cars anyways I see a stock price which came all the way from low levels to quite some high figures we have price to earnings ratio on whatever sales they are uh, the underlying sales at 48 tells me can, could be a bit of uh, a bit on the rather higher end here and uh, rolling earnings per share 4.72 well in any case it's uh, up to each individual to check uh, they don't pay dividends obviously and this growth stock here but they look actually not really keen on moving uh, at the moment at least towards uh, higher levels talking about uh, uh, spending and uh, growth uh, we have comments from uh, janet yellen uh, from the uh, u.s treasury secretary that she said that uh, consumer inflation and in particular the university michigan consumer sentiment survey has again showed uh, numbers falling and particularly a positive momentum from the population that said inflation underlying inflation ran towards uh, the two percent level for a second straight quarter so with that uh, she would have uh, enough firepower in her hands to say inflation is well under control and uh, that could be something that uh, not only the central bank but also the treasury department in the us is preparing markets slightly for lower interest rates potentially anytime soon what else do we have numbers wise that's most of the situation we should talk about Chinese stimulus, stimulus uh, of course. Oh, we have some bleak forecast here. Intel was uh, causing some negative figures. And that's uh, something where we could see as well that uh, market momentum, it could be uh, up and uh, running towards the recent uh, correctional pattern. So we can't really see it, but uh, there might be something that uh, the market is seeing some sort of uh, negative momentum. Uh, the first quarter projection sales and profit came in well shorter compared to expectations so that's something interesting in regards to the chip sector looking at intel and vdr we could uh, look at those uh, those guys as well they have skyrocketed right and the figures have been actually good so uh, the question is going to be is there still more upside or is the question around how much more upside is there going to be uh, from a to a potential market perspective we can just simply say okay it all looks cool and uh, is uh, kind of quite a sweet momentum where and how the market is going to react we have the uh, 161.8 oops fibonacci retracement which would uh, end up at 700 something so um if we're looking at it from the uh, from the fibonacci levels here comparing the the the, the current uh, driving force towards uh, lower areas if we're looking at it from from this recent uh, breakout zone we would uh, we would see that the 261 retracement uh, kicks in at 650. there is something right so we had the high point here and we saw the correction and now we take the breakout from this correction basically th this uh, month from the recent correction uh, in uh, end of uh, well end of the year it was september september october right september october yeah september october period uh, when stock markets kind of corrected a fair bit before the year end rally started we take the correction into consideration and then take this as the breakout point was already exceeded uh, say starting at 500 
psychological round number would have been a target at 555. Book check, that's done. And uh, the next target could be the 261 uh, FIP level here. If we're looking at NVIDIA, uh, shares fell more than 10% for Intel yesterday. That's uh, uh, following the announcement, obviously. So chip sector, kind of quite something interesting. Tech sector in general, whether this is going to lead towards uh, some weaker figures uh, might be the question here right now. Apart from this, uh, guys, uh, what makes actually sense? So first of all, let's uh, continue with our oil trade. This has been running nicely so far. We could take uh, some profit off the table. It uh, for the ones uh, following this opportunity here, I'll leave it to each and every one. Obviously, the market breaking higher. It's looking positive. I would not like to take out uh, some profit now. One thing. The swap is a bit of a tricky situation, so uh, it's a bit higher here, but still we have the weekend now, so it's not going to impact us much. So let's evaluate Monday, Tuesday next week before the three-day swap, uh, which should be on Wednesday, uh, is being calculated. Let me check to make this one up. Where is oil? Where we have oil? I should clear up my list here. It's so many. Uh, oil. Uh, I see oil in front of my eyes. Not quite too much oil. Crude light. Crude light. We could, let's see. Uh, anyways, the Wednesday. Yeah. So Wednesday, uh, Wednesday. So Wednesday. 5 p.m. New York time when the markets rolled over. <clears throat> we got the three day swap. By the way, a quick detour here. The swap is um, a three day swap just because uh, it makes up for the weekend. So it's T plus two, delivery date plus two days. Usually it's from the banking side here where sat Saturday, Sunday are days which are closed for trading, obviously. And then we have T plus two, which means Wednesday we get a throp, uh, swap uh, accumulated or uh, basically uh, withdrawn from our trading account uh, on a Wednesday. So that's uh, for this market. So let's focus on the oil trend potentially. If it goes higher, we have the sell stop in the euro cat. That is uh, actually looking quite positive. Oops, that's not supposed to be. Um, we have the uh, euro cat uh, trend which is developing to the downside we are currently back below the 50 moving average that's what we said let's uh, delete the order in uh, the dollar cap because it had gone far towards to, to the upside here still could correct further if oil remains positive the canadian dollar likely picks up steam but euro cat euro weaker obviously euro cat also might get some bearish potential plus the canadian dollar gearing up momentum in regards to oil higher so this trend and this trading opportunity looks kind of quite cool to get uh, triggered. Further updates uh, on Telegram. Oh, Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin, nothing much uh, sideways. Still risks for the markets to roll further to the downside here. Uh, that's uh, what we can observe so far. Ether looks similarly weak. Also basically kind of uh, potentially pushing the market momentum to lower areas anytime soon. Happy trading. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Gerhard. See you. Tschüss.